I don't need to explain that, it's, I, but I'd like Callaway to explain what the logic is in doing that. And maybe I can speak to him and try and find out because it makes no sense, I always say. Right, so today I'm out on the golf course first and foremost at Kirby Lonsdale and get some real feedback as to how both of these clubs perform in an average golfer's hands. But there is one element that I'm going to reveal in today's video that you must stick around to hear because if you're going to buy a set of these clubs, I suggest there's one element you pay particular attention to. Super ball flight, my swing, just pulling it a bit left. And that would have been the right yardage as well, which interestingly enough was 154 to the centre of the green. That was an eight iron in the forge. That's that hollow bodied version of these two irons. And the two being the AI 200 and the AI 300, as ever, Callaway have made it nice and simple to remember all these uh, different names that they've got in their product range right now. The two clubs differ hugely in the way they're put together. And that's because one is a hollow body iron and the other is a cavity back iron. And what I want to find out in today's video was how they perform differently, one versus the other, what separates them in terms of performance out on the course, maybe sound and feel will be a different issue, maybe the way they look, because they're aimed potentially at slightly different golfers looking for different things. Left of the flag on. Yeah, quite a bit left of the flag, um, but again, that's down to my swing. Interestingly enough, when I get in this position, 175 uphill, I've gone for the six iron. I've reached again for the, um, for the cavity back. And it's just a mental thing, isn't it? Just that little bit of bulk is, tends to be visually the thing that resonates in my brain. It means I'll hit it a bit further and it's perhaps a bit easier to hit at the same time. Well, that was the first long iron. It was the four iron in the, uh, the cavity back. It really is hard to tell a difference. However, you can at address just see that little bit more bulk, but I've got to admit at that long end of the bag, I'd feel more confident in seeing that. But the important news off the club face, it's gone like an absolute bullet. A good swing, straight ball flight, quite a penetrating, relatively low ball flight, but it really feels like it's firing off that club face. Not too bad, a little bit off the bottom, but it's okay. And that is the hollow bodied version. Um, and the hollow bodied version basically is what we've seen from many different club manufacturers right now, which is um, forged face. And the feel to that is always debatable. It's certainly not like a forged iron, um, but the face is interesting because it's been developed with the AI technology, hence the AI 200, and it's that using real data from actual golfer's swings in producing a face that Callaway suggests is more forgiving, faster ball speeds, higher spinning where it needs to be. And it's just a very intelligent manufactured club face. Oh, that's so much better. I mean, the debate is how much better was the swing compared to the first one? Because in terms of what I'm getting out of that cavity back, the performance is unreal. I can go and have a look down the fairway but I can tell you this way, it's always interesting for me out on the course, irrelevant, irrelevant to what data tells me, the four iron or the irons full stop in the cavity back are absolutely firing off the face in comparison to the hollow body, for me at least. So what's interesting for me is the way these two irons are classed and the category they've been put in. Player's distance iron is the A200, and then you've got the A300, which is actually classed as a game improvement iron. And it's interesting because every time you call something game improvement iron, you, you're expected to be fairly bulky. And yes, the AI 300 is bigger than that of the 200, but not overly so. And I think it's a real nice compact iron. And if this has got the game improvement attributes that I'm finding so far, then I can certainly see there's a lot of people gonna lean towards this, uh, this cavity back. But the interesting bit on that for me is over the last few years, everybody's been leaning towards hollow bodied irons as being where all the forgiveness is and where all the assistance is. But this is Callaway's new game improvement iron and it's a cavity back iron. That should be right on it. Is it down? That's interesting again, you know, it's, um, it's grabbed nice and sat tight. It's only a wedge I'm hitting in, 
125 yards again so these have got a little bit of distance in them and again obviously that's relative loft lovely feel out of that cavity back iron at that shorter end that's the first one i've hit i hit an eight earlier on actually but uh, yeah that wedge in hand felt really good really responsive on the greens as well which is always something that and i, I just got to reiterate this point we've got a lot of dry ball data on this channel that often points towards a sort of low spinning iron certainly in my hands but it's very different when it's seen out on the fairways and i think you've got to play close attention to what you're hitting off those indoor mats invariably produce very low spin a really good strike Be interesting to see the distance that's carried it as well so we're in an elevated position um, and that is playing sort of well, let's look back there 190 yards and that's gone middle of the green that was a six iron that i've played and uh just shows again just how hot these things are i know it's elevated but i still feel that's a, a decent carry um, and just again i keep reaching for this forged element really good club but i'm going to switch out and i'm going to hit from the same uh, t position i'm going to try the um the hollow body iron and uh, show you how fresh these are this thing hasn't even had the wrapper off yet it might be a good time to discuss the looks. Let me know what you think at this point of the difference between the two. Uh, because let's be honest, there's not a lot to separate them. Again, nice strike. Is that going to get there? Just a tad shorter. It's actually run on to, uh, well, closer to the flag than the other one. But definitely, maybe again, just a little bit bottom groovy with that. Um, but I can't deny the fact that every shot that I've hit so far I definitely prefer everything about the game improvement iron not only performance but so far at least I'm getting the best sound feel just overall experience with that uh, AI 300 and uh, yeah surprised in a way now, how good is Kirby Lonsdale by the way and uh, if you want to see a bit more of this place then uh, Monday's video is uh, well it was filmed in a bit more sunshine earlier on this week make sure you check that out but onto these clubs again, and talking of good-looking things is, uh, I think it's fair to say, Callaway have done an incredible job of updating these irons. And I just want to pause this video for a minute and check this out, what I said just a few years ago. And the only thing I'd say about Apex is the sort of styling has been around now for quite a while. And I think maybe it's time that Callaway refresh that a little bit. So Callaway obviously listened, and I think they've done a fantastic job in updating these things. And uh, you put them in the bag and, oh my God, you're happy. But I also want to, I've got two irons in my hand because uh, I want you to sort of take a good close look at them and tell me the difference because yes, there is one, but it's very minor. These are two eight irons. One is that uh, cavity back, which is this model. And when they call it a cavity back, I mean, there's a very small cavity that's taken or removed from that. And then you've got the hollow bodied what sort of single piece iron. The reason I want to point this out as being a real positive move in them looking the same is that the idea to blend the set, which I think is a real popular move right now, and a clever move, not just a popular one, is that if you want to put these two sets in the bag, then when you take a quick glance, they just, you will not notice that you've got two very different uh, iron makeups in the bag, but it's one that I would seriously consider and recommend based on what I'm finding so far. Oh, so good. I could hit that thing all day long. Absolute fired out. That's that four iron again, which is uh, not often that I'm reaching for a four iron. And if you have stuck around, it's really important that you very carefully listen to what I'm about to tell you, because I've rarely seen a loft difference between a setup in, uh, in irons like what Callaway have put together in both of these. That sounded a bit confusing to me, so I'll try again. Look at the four iron, look at the five iron, look at the six iron and look at the lofts. Now, a two degree increment in loft between a four iron and a five iron is absolutely ludicrous. I don't need to explain that, it's, I, but I'd like Callaway to explain what the logic is in doing that. And maybe I can speak to him and try and find out because it makes no sense. I always say you should consider dropping your four and five iron out of the bag. And without doubt, in this case, you should certainly think about dropping the five iron out of the bag because 
It's the same in the AI200 and the AI300, and those differentials, loft increments, whatever you want to call them, are not great enough to see, to, to, for you to see, or I to see, any difference in performance whatsoever. So, it's a real shocker. I don't understand the logic behind it, but take a close look and someone make sense of why there's only two degrees difference between two irons in the new AI300 and AI200 irons from Callaway. Again, I've had the left semi all day. Ah, oh, the distance looks right again. And to be honest with you, I'm going to finish up there because um, as my performance aside, what I will say is that uh, I'm very much swayed towards the AI 300s. First of all, I think they look fantastic. I don't think they look like a game improvement iron as we would normally uh, sort of understand it to look like. The top line is perfectly fine. They've done a clever job in chamfering that top line off so you don't see a great deal. But then in the longer end of the bag, you start to see a bit of this muscle and that's where I want to see it because I, uh, I want to get confidence from that visual. They sound good, they feel good. I've got no problem with the, uh, the AI 200s, but I just don't really see what you gain uh, from gaming one over the other because when I first seen them, my immediate thought was, oh, this is kind of like a short irons AI 200 in around the seven iron through to four iron, I'll maybe go into the AI 300s, but I wouldn't do it because like I said, I just don't see the point. These are the short end of the, of the bag, I've got great feel. Um, great control and don't look like I said overly bulky. Either way, two really good sets of irons from Callaway and uh, I think either way it's going to be down to some personal preferences and uh, I'm sure that if you're in the market for a set of irons right now you should definitely include these on the to try list. Right that's me done thanks to Kirby Lonsdale. Unfortunately sun wasn't shining today but course still looked fantastic. Let me know your thoughts on these. Uh, hit the like, subscribe, all those things and I'll see you very soon.